support the local church here. That's between you and God. We have the box back there, or you could do so online. Pueden dar en línea o en la caja. Whatever you purpose in your heart, de tu corazón, you give it to God. The Lord will take care of you. Amen. All right, church. So with that said, let's go ahead now and open up in our Bibles to the book of Galatians, chapter number one. Con eso vamos a empezar nuestro uh, mensaje. Por favor, abren sus Biblias al libro de Galatas, capítulo 1. <clears throat> and as we get started, as usual, it's good to see everybody here. How's everybody's weekend going? Anybody? Everybody having a good week? Buen fin de semana. Okay. It's a blessing to see Sister Kina back here, man, and Brother Giovanni. We've been praying for them. Some of our members have been getting a little sick. And uh, please keep... Um, uh, Sister Maribel's child, Brother Felipe, Sister Baby Darlene, she was admitted to the ER not too long ago. She's recovering. Por favor, oran por el bebé Darlene, el hijo, el hija, la hija de hermana Maribel, el hermano Felipe, lo llevaron al hospital emergencia jueves uh, por fiebre. Y este, we just want to pray for them. So keep their family in prayer, of course. They haven't been here as they're taking care of their of their child. We sure love them, and we want to be here in prayer for them. Um, that's what they need. Amen. It's lo que necesitan oración. So please pray for them, okay? Okay, guys, let's go ahead and continue in our verse-by-verse -verse study. Vamos a continuar con nuestro estudio versículo por versículo por el libro de Galatas, capítulo 1. Today is going to be part 4, parte número 4. And uh, let's go ahead and continue now. Let's read once again, starting here from verse number 4. Vamos a empezar de versículo 4. So follow along, por favor, sigan en sus Biblias, versículo 4. The Bible says, Who gave himself for our sins? that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that call you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel, from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men, or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the word of God today. Lord, we want to pray on the behalf of Sister Maribel, Brother Felipe, for their dear child, baby Darlene, God, once again, we pray for the recovery of baby Darlene's health, Lord, her body, uh, the infirmities, God, that uh, she's going through in her, little, in her little baby body, Lord. We just pray that your hand of mercy would please be upon her uh, so she could recover, and please keep the family whole together and use this opportunity to bring them closer together to you, Lord God, in prayer. Father, we thank you for the return of some members who were sick this past couple of days, Lord. We thank you to see them here today. We thank you for our visiting family that's coming back to fellowship with us, Lord. We pray that you would help us to minister to them the best we can. And Lord, we pray that you would stir up our church to help with translation and, and uh, all these things, God, so we can meet the needs of our church and the world the best we can, Lord. You know who you gifted in here. You know who you've called. And they know, Lord. And I pray that you'd stir them by your Holy Spirit to get busy, Lord God, so they can start uh, uh, working for that eternal reward to come, Lord. So I thank you for what you're doing in our church and what you're going to continue to do. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, Galatians 1. Let's revisit the theme again. Vamos a visitar otra vez la tema uh, del libro de Galatas. It is a uh, warning Christians from those who are trouble, uh, those who are spiritual perverts and creeps from removing their steadfast belief in doctrine of salvation by grace through faith. Uh, Galatians does not present salvation or the message of salvation to the Christians since the recipients are already saved. Go back here to verse number 2. Uh, no está escribiendo el, el, el este post, uh, epistola a, la, a los que no son cristianos, son cristianos, mira versículo 2, pero es un mensaje de, uh, how do I say warning in Spanish, anybody? Warning. It's a it's a mess it's a, it's a message to warn them, uh, como ser cuidado uh, de los que son uh, pervetos espirituales, los que van a, a traer este um, a problemas por sus doctrinas falsos que enseñan otro modo de salvación que es solamente por la gracia de Dios 
uh, por fe solamente. Entonces, Galata no presenta el, mes el mensaje de salvación a los recipientes porque ya son salvos, sobre el siglo 2 pero uh, como que es un este, una, una cuidado, pues eso la, that's, the, that's the idea there, to warn them and to exhort them, beseeching them from the Holy Spirit of these Christians in the region to be aware of perverted doctrine which seeks to bewitch and remove them from their Savior. Uh, so notice, church, not necessarily their pastor, uh, not necessarily their assembly, but from Jesus. Look at verse number uh, number. Six. Dice, estoy maravillado de que tan pronto os hay, hayáis traspado del que os llamo a la gracia de Cristo a otro evangelio. So, Jesus, the Paul, Paul the Apostle saying, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him. So, again, it's when that, when that false doctrine begins to creep into your life, it's not necessarily a removal from the pastor, from the church. It's an attempted removal from who? Jesus Christ. So whether it's a doctrine, whether it's a temptation, whether it's a, a sin from a false teacher, a false prophet, or a false church, whatever is trying to deter you from him personally, you need to be watchful and don't be deceived because that's the devil's job. His job is to get in middle between you and Jesus Christ as best he can and as much as he can. Eso es el trabajo de Satanás para ponerse en medio entre tú y el Salvador lo más que puede él con todo su poder por doctrina falso, por iglesias falsos, profetas falsos, o también tentaciones, pecados, influencias negativas uh, para ponerse en medio entre tú y Cristo. No entre tú y tu pastor, entre tú y tu iglesia, no, no. Entre tú y Cristo. Eso es lo más importante. That's the most important that we need to realize from uh, the warning in verse number six. Uh, it's, uh, it's again, not, a, not any other, uh, if you will, um, uh, problem between them and the church house, nevertheless, between them and Jesus. And it could be perhaps because of the lack of the pastoral oversight and care from the elders and teachers and members who fail then and now to study to prove all things so they don't allow these types of doctrines from entering in first within their houses but then secondarily as many times it starts with private meetings with these false teachers to enter into the church so a donde empieza cuando eh, empieza a meterse la doctrina empieza privada en la casa y puede, puede ser culpa del pastores los líderes que no estudian y no saben más doctrina de esas cosas porque pueden empezar ahí priva es muy sutil eh, del, del, um, del trabajo de Satanás por eso hay que cuidar y los miembros de la iglesia no nada más el pastor cuidarse en sí mismo con doctrina sana porque ahí va a empezar privada it's going to start privately in your home and then secondly into the church so we need to be mindful <clears throat> the gospel of Christ, church. Mira, el evangelio de Cristo. En versículo número 4. Who gave himself for our sins. El cual se dio a sí mismo por nuestros pecados. Pero, ahí no, ahí no para. It doesn't stop there. Para librarnos de este presente mundo malo. That's the second half of the gospel, if you will. The effect that it should have in the believer. The gospel isn't only church that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. That he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. But that he might deliver us from this present evil world. So remember, church, don't forget the legal atonement penalty that was paid. Jesus Christ, he offered his blood. But the spiritual freedom to deliver us from the power of sin is the secondary benefit that Christ offers the sinner who believes. No se olvida, legalmente, Cristo ofreció su sangre en el cruz para pagar el, el, el pago del, del pecado, legalmente, eso es lo que él este, cumplió. Pero el segundo parte del evangelio es el efecto que puede tener en nuestra vida para que librarnos de este presente mundo. Pervertir el evangelio de Cristo. So, again, it's not another gospel. No es otro evangelio. Es el evangelio que estos hombres meten en las iglesias a pervertir el evangelio de Cristo, que os perturban, that's what they are, they're trouble. But though we, the apostle says in verse number eight, mas si aun nosotros, o un ángel del cielo, 
os predicaré otro evangelio, if they preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, sea anatema. Let him be accursed. That's a very important church. Here's what the Apostle Paul is saying here. Whether it's me or another apostle, whether it's me or another prophet, whether it's me or an angel from heaven, no importa si es me, como Pablo dice, o Pedro, o Juan, o otro de los apóstoles, o otro profeta, o ángel. If they preach any other gospel, the Bible says that God has ordained unto those trespassers, those troublers, those perverts, a curse, condemnation. Dios ordenó un condenación anatema entre ellos, esas personas que perviten el evangelio de Cristo. Es muy poderoso. Eso es muy poderoso saber. It's very powerful to understand that. So let's finish on this topic concerning Paul. Vamos a terminar con el tópico de Pablo. Como él también fue apóstol, no nada más Pedro Juan, porque hay muchos hoy que, uh, que quieren descortir de a la autoridad del apóstol Pablo. Believe it or not, there are many people that want to question the authority of the apostle Paul and his letters, but we're going to see how Jesus ordained him to be an apostle. We're going to, vamos a mirar como Cristo ordenó a, pa, a Pablo también ser apóstol. So let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Vamos a 1 Corintios capítulo 9. And let's look here together. We already talked about the qualifications last Sunday. Ya hablamos de los calificaciones el, el domingo pasado de ser apostol. We studied that the apostles had five sign gifts for them specifically. Estudiamos que habían cinco regalos señales de, uh, de la, de la ministerio de la apostolidad. Apostolado, I don't know how to say that. And so, with those sign gifts, entonces con esos señales uh, cinco uh, regalos del Espíritu por los apóstoles, that's how we're able to determine today that there is no other living apostle. Uh, por esos razones bíblicos, podemos interpretar y creer hoy que no hay apóstoles todavía viviendo porque terminó con Pablo. It finished with Paul as we're going to see now. So look at what he says in verse 1. He says, Am I not an apostle? No soy apóstol. Am I not free? No soy libre. Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? No he visto a Jesucristo nuestro Señor. No sois vosotros mi obra en el Señor. Are not ye my work in the Lord? So notice, have I not seen? No he visto. Remember, recuerdan que uno de los calificaciones, one of the requirements was to physically see Jesus Christ resurrected. Mirar Jesucristo Resucito, o como se dice, um, resucitado de los muertos, to be raised from the dead, calificación, that was very important. So Jesus revealed himself to, to Paul. Jesucristo uh, se reveló, uh, uh, como se dice, himself, a uh, Pablo, en Hechos capítulo 9. So he's seen him. So that's check one. Okay, vamos a 1 Corintios 15. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. Vamos a empezar. Versículo 6. We're going to start at verse 6. The Bible says, After that he was seen of above 500 brethren at once. And by the way, you guys can close the door if you guys want to keep it cool in here. Anybody can, uh, if you want to close the door? After that he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. Y después fue visto por más de 500 hermanos a la vez, de los cuales muchos viven aún y otros ya duermen. After that, después, he was seen of James. Fue visto por Jacobo. Then, of all the apostles. Luego, por todos los apóstoles. So, I showed you, ya los enseñé, past Sunday, el último domingo, Hechos capítulo 1, el fin de Lucas capítulo 24. I already showed you Acts 1 at the end of Acts 24. Those 40 days, remember, acuérdense, los 40 días. That's where this took place. Ahí es donde todo eso pasó. Okay, now look at verse 8. And last of all, y el último de todos, he was seen of me also, como por un nacido de destimpiento, él fue visto también por mí. As of one born out of due time, he was seen of me also. So that's why we, as independent Baptists, por eso como nosotros, bautizas independientes, interpretamos esto, eso, eso tópico de, de la apostolidad, 
El Pablo era el último porque aquí en versículo 8. That's why we interpret that Paul was the last living apostle because he said, last of all, he was seen of me also. Okay, so there's a definitive finishing of the, of the apostleship. He says in verse 9, for I am the least of the apostles porque yo... Soy el más pequeño de los apóstoles, that I'm not meet to be called an apostle, que no soy digno uh, de ser llamado apóstol, porque perseguí la iglesia de Dios, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, mas por la gracia de Dios soy lo que soy. Y su gracia no ha sido en vano por, para conmigo. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly. Antes he trabajado más que todos ellos. But he says, look here. Yet not I, pero no yo, but the grace of God, sino la gracia de Dios que ha sido conmigo, which was with me. So remember, I talked to some of you guys about that. The grace of God, it's not just an attribute of God, that he's a gracious God. No nomás es un atributo de Dios, que Dios es un Dios con gracia. Pero... But the grace of God enables a sinner to work for God. La gracia de Dios también da el poder al pecador a trabajar por él. The grace of God in me. El, el, la gracia de Dios adentro de Pablo trabajando. Mira lo que él dijo. Trabajando más. So Paul worked more than who? Peter, John, James, all of them. Pablo trabajó más del Pedro de Juan. ¿Por qué? Por la gracia. So the grace of God, it doesn't just... Uh, save your soul so you can be a lazy Christian. Can I get an amen? Uh, la gracia de Dios no nada más te salva para que puedas ser un cristiano flojo. Uh, the grace of God saves you to work. La gracia de Dios te salva para trabajar. ¿Para quién? Por él. To work for him. Amen. So church, don't excuse yourself once again by telling me that you don't have enough Holy Spirit because you have all the Holy Spirit you need. No me dan excusa que no tienes suficiente Espíritu Santo porque tú tienes todo el Espíritu Santo, amen, para hacer qué? Trabajo para Él. So you can work for Him. What do you have to do? Labor. You just have to work. No más necesitas trabajar. Porque mira, Pablo tenía lo mismo de Pedro. Tenía lo mismo de Juan. He had the same uh, function and unction, if you will, as the other apostles. But he labored more. So you can work more, Christian. A puede ser más cristiano. What are you waiting for? ¿Qué estás esperando? Look at verse 11. Therefore, whether it were I, así que, ya sea yo o ellos, so we preach, predicamos, and so ye believed, y así habéis creído. So, Paul was ordained an apostle to join the apostles who were apostles before him to preach what? The gospel. El apóstol Pablo fue ordenado por Cristo para continuar con los apóstoles que ya, habían, que, que, ya, que ya eran apóstoles antes de él para continuar haciendo qué? Predicando el Evangelio. So, from Acts chapter 1, desde Hechos capítulo 1 hasta el, los últimos tiempos del apóstol Juan, from Acts, from Acts chapter 1 all the way to the end of John, writing Revelation. They were preaching the gospel. Eran predicando el evangelio. So, mira otra vez, como dijo aquí. Whether it were I or they. Uh, ya sea yo o ellos. ¿Qué dijo en Galatas? If we preach any other gospel that was preached unto you, let him be accursed. Si predicamos otro evangelio, sea anatema, ¿recuerdas? So, it doesn't matter. Peter, Paul, James, Jew, no, no importa. Pedro, Pablo, Judo. If they started to preach something else than what Jesus gave them, se empezaron a predicar algo diferente que Cristo les enseñó del principio, there would be a curse. Había un ana anatema. So who do we follow? ¿Quién seguimos yo? Los apóstoles o la doctrina de los apóstoles. Do we follow the apostles or the apostles' doctrine? We follow the apostles' doctrine. Seguimos la doctrina de los apóstoles. ¿Por qué? Why? Because... Even though they were apostles, aunque eran apóstoles, Pedro tenía faltas. Peter had faults. Y Pablo lo necesitaba a corregir. Paul needed to correct Peter. Because of what? Doctrine. Por doctrina. 
So no importa si era Pedro, si era Judas, si era Jacobo, it doesn't matter if it was Peter uh, or Jude or James. If they receive truth from Jesus, si recibieron verdad de Jesucristo, and if their lives went contrary to it, y sus vidas fueron contrario de la verdad que Dios lo reveló, seguimos la verdad, la doctrina, no seguimos las acciones de apóstol o pastor si no es en acuerdo con las palabras de Dios. If they're not in agreement with the word of God. That's very important for you to remember, church. Okay, so here we have it. Jesus Christ revealed himself to him. Okay, let's go ahead and go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians capítulo 12. Let's go down here to verse number 11. Punto número 3. Pablo fue ordenado por Cristo ser apóstol. ¿Por qué? Porque continuó los cinco regalos señales en su ministerio. Jesus Christ ordained Paul to be an apostle, the last one, el último, because the five sign gifts followed Paul. Okay, look at what he says here in verse number 11. In versículo 11, dice, I am become a fool in glorying. You have compelled me. Me hecho un necio al gloriarme. Vosotros me obligastes. Uh, for I ought to have been commended of you. Pues yo debía de ser al alabado por vosotros. Uh, for in nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostles, porque nada soy menos que aquellos grandes apostoles, though I be nothing, aunque nada soy. Look at verse 12. Truly the signs of an apostle. Ciertamente las señales de apostol han sido hechas entre vosotros en toda paciencia. The signs of the apostles were among you in all patience. In signs and señales and wonders y maravillas and mighty deeds y pro, prodigios. prodigios. Mira, look, it doesn't say the sign of a pastor. No dice señales del pastor. It doesn't say sign of a teacher. No dice señales de un maestro. No dice señal de evangelista. It doesn't say sign of an evangelist. It says signs of an apostle. What are those signs? ¿Qué son esos señales? Maravillas, señales y prodigios. Those are those signs, the wonders, and the mighty deeds. So today, entonces hoy, no importa YouTube, doesn't matter if it's on YouTube, the China, from China, from Africa, the Africa, Colombia, Colombia, from all those places on the earth, If those five sign gifts do not follow them, they are a false apostle. Si esos cinco regalos del Espíritu Santo que le dio al apóstol no los siguen a los que dicen, oh, soy apóstol, son falsos. But don't forget, they weren't even alive. Nobody today has been alive since the days of John the Baptist. Nadie hoy es, es, eh, que vive hoy eran vivos durante el ministerio de Juan Bautista. So, entonces, no hay ningún apóstol que todavía viven que está siguiendo en este oficina. There's nobody today that is continuing in the apostleship. The signs of an apostle. So, what does that tell me then next? What about being a pastor? So, e entonces, de, qué, qué, de, de, de otra cosa de um, que nos podemos um, entender más. If there's no signs of a pastor, si hay no señales de un pastor o, 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 o maestro o cualquier cosa, it doesn't matter if it's a, if, if there's no signs of a pastor or teacher, then how does one become a pastor or a teacher? ¿Cómo puede ser un pastor o maestro? Training. Enseñando. Uh, entrenando. Okay, so let's go real quick, muy rápido. No son las notas, Tomás, hermano Carlos, muy rápido. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter number, uh, mm, Bible memory. No, nope. 2 Timothy 2, primer, I mean, 2 Timoteo capítulo 2. This is what we do now. Eso es lo que hacemos como cristianos que creemos la Biblia. Entrenamos a los hermanos para continuar en esas otras posiciones para la iglesia. Pastor, teacher, evangelist, cualquier cosa. We train the men now to serve in those roles, not apostles, no apostles. Look at verse number one. The Bible says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Tú pues, hijo mío, esfuerzarte en la gracia que es en Cristo Jesús. So what did we learn earlier, church? 
Paul labored. Pablo trabajó. Pero no él dijo, right? Not me. Pero la gracia en me, right? The grace of God in me. What do you need to do, brother? ¿Qué necesitas hacer, hermano? Esfuerzarte en la gracia. You need to be strong in the grace. ¿Para hacer qué? To work. Para trabajar. Para, uh, uh, you understand what we're saying. Now look at verse 2. And the things, y, los, y lo que has oído, uh, the things that thou has heard of me, de mi ante muchos testigos, the same, now mira, esto encarga to faithful men, a hombres fieles que sean idóneos, is that how you say that? Idóneos, para enseñar también a otros who shall be able to teach others also. So then, what does that tell me, brother? The apostles, who revealed himself to them? Jesus Christ. Are you with me? All of them, all of them saw Jesus Christ resurrected, uh, you know, everything. Jesucristo, how do you say that? He revealed himself to the apostles? Okay, yeah, you can say that better. He showed himself. He ordained men specifically. He chose men specifically to be an apostle. Él ordenó hombres Specificos y los escogió specificos para ser que apostol. Pero pastor, but the pastor, the teacher, you know what we have to do now? Sabes que necesitamos hacer hoy? Encargar hombres fieles para enseñar también a otros. We need to train men, we need to teach men who shall be able to what? Teach others also. That's how you get to that pastor, brother. That's how you get to that teacher, brother. Así es donde. Uh, así es como uh, puedes ser es el pastor, teacher, evangelist, porque alguien te va a enseñar, alguien te va a encargar, alguien te va a enseñar para que tú puedas también enseñar a otros. So notice, we're, this is a recurring ministry. We're teaching, we're teaching. Estamos enseñando. But apostleship, that was special. La apostolidad era algo especial. Cristo, es, él hizo eso muy especial, pero no, hoy... We train, enseñamos, um, uh, entren, entrenamos los hermanos uh, a estudiar y todo eso. We train the brothers, okay? So there you have it. That's how you will get to that place. Now, whether you want to go to Bible school, si quieres ir a una escuela de la Biblia, no problema. Según Timoteo 2.2, they're going to teach you, te van a enseñar. Whether you want to be taught and discipled privately by your pastor, si quieres estar discipulado por tu pastor local, not a problem, no problema. 2 Timothy 2, 2, eh, lo mismo versículo. We're going to train you, lo vamos a entrenar, so you can teach others para que puedas enseñar a otros. Amen. Okay, let's go to uh, Acts chapter 4. Vamos a, a Hechos capítulo 4. So now we saw, we, yeah, we, we, just, we just show you from the Bible, Paul was an apostle. He was legit. El apóstol Pablo, ya lo enseñamos, él fue un apóstol uh, legitimately, I don't know, say that, ladies, y'all can help me out over there. Um, he was authorized. That, uh, <laughs> you guys can help me out. Uh, remember, recuerda que los judeos, los sacerdotes y todo ellos, the Sanhedrin, I don't know how to say it in Spanish, uh, estaban persucando los apóstoles porque estaban predicando y, y Dios le, les dio, uh, confirmó su predicación con todos esos regalos del Espíritu Santo, los cinco. Y, uh, and you, you guys remember in Acts 3, in Hechos 3, un hombre que no podía caminar, uh, un milagro, ¿verdad? You guys remember the story. So, here we have it. Vamos continuando en versículo 29. And here's what he says here. Están orando. They're praying con la iglesia, with the church. And now, Lord, y ahora, Señor, behold their threatenings. Mira sus amenazas. And grant unto thy servants, y concede a tus siervos, that with all boldness, que con todo den, denuedo, I don't know, hablen tu palabra, that they may speak thy word. What are the apostles before they're an apostle? ¿Qué son los apóstoles antes que son apóstoles? Siervos. What should a pastor be before he's a pastor? ¿Qué debe ser el pastor antes que es pastor? Siervo. So don't forget that. Before the title, antes del título. Before the recognition, antes que el, del conocimiento de los hermanos y iglesias. Siervo, siervo, siervo. Be a servant. And what do you want to ask God? ¿Qué quieres pedir a Dios? Dios, ayúdame ser de, de nudo 
hablar tu palabra. Give me the boldness to just preach your word because I, that's, that's what changes lives. Eso es lo que cambia la gente. Predicando la palabra. Amen. Look at verse 30, versículo 30. Okay. Apostles, remember that. Apostles, don't forget that, the context. By stretching forth thine hand y extendiendo tu mano para que sanidades, so that signs, or if, I'm sorry, the healing, and that signs and wonders may be done, y milagros y prodigios sean hechos por el nombre de tu santo hijo Jesús, so that wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. Mira versículo 31, look at verse 31. When they had prayed, y cuando uh, hubieron orado, uh, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. El lugar en que estaban congregados tembló. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Y todos fueron llenos del Espíritu Santo. And they spake the word of God with boldness. Y hablaron la palabra de Dios con... De nuevo. Oh, I want to be an apostle, brother. Yo quiero ser apóstol. Are you preaching the word of God? Eres predicando la palabra. Oh, yo quiero ser pastor, brother. Yo quiero ser pastor. I want to be a pastor. Are you preaching the word of God? I, I, I want to be a teacher. Yo quiero ser maestro. Are you preaching? Are you asking God for boldness? Eres preguntando al Señor por denuedo para, que, para hacer qué? Predicar la palabra. Are you being a servant first? Eres siervo antes. Eso es lo más importante. But notice, fíjate. When the apostles were praying, cuando los apóstoles estaban orando, orando con la iglesia, preguntando, preguntó por denuedo. They asked for boldness to preach. Don't forget that. Today, hoy, los apóstoles falsos, the false apostles, teachers falsos, maestros falsos, iglesias falsos, they're too excited uh, to want to lure people from doctrine, get it, uh, how do you say that? Um, they want to allure you the attention. Anybody out there? They want to steal away your attention. Quiere robar tu atención de doctrina para las cosas del cuerpo. Porque mira, si vienen hoy y ahorita hablamos en lenguas y con aceite y no sé qué tanto más. Ay, puede crecer tus manos y tus dedos y uh, estatura y cualquier cosa más que para, para, para profecía, no sé qué tanto. Están robando tu atención de qué? De la doctrina, de la Biblia. They're robbing your attention from the Word of God. So, if the apostles, si los apóstoles importaron lo, lo, lo que, uh, ¿cómo se dice? ¿Qué era más importante? What was more important? Predicar la palabra. If that was the most important thing, then that should be the most important thing for me today. Eso debe ser lo más importante por mí hoy. Amen. Don't worry about the healings. No se, no, no les, um, uh, no te preocupes de los, este, todas esas cosas que miras por tele y por videos. If they're not preaching the word of God, si no predican la palabra y los están enseñando doctrina puro, doctrina, um, este, uh, balance y todo eso, uh, it's because they're false. It's porque son falsos. Don't let them tickle you. Don't let them uh, to get to you. Amen. Okay. Vamos al, al libro de... Mateo, capítulo 10. Let's go to Matthew, chapter 10. So, esos hombres que eran apóstoles, these men that were apostles, they were selected by who? Fue escogido por quién? Anybody following along? Jesus Christ. We saw that. So, look at verse number 1. Vamos a mirar versículo 1. When he had called unto him his 12 disciples. Mira. Entonces llamó, llamando a sus doce discípulos, he gave them power. Les dio potestad contra los espíritus inmundos. He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Para que los echasen fuera y sanasen toda enfermedad y toda dolencia. So, ¿quién los escogió? Cristo. Pero, ¿qué eran antes del título de apóstol? ¿Eran qué? Discípulos, don't forget that. So, otra vez, o, 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 otro mensaje por otro día, hermano. Siervo, servant first. Segundo, disciple. Número dos, discípulo. Okay, now, look, look at verse number 12, or uh, versículo 2. 
Now the names of the 12 apostles are these. Y los nombres de los 12 apostoles son estos. And then we can go throughout the names. But podemos leer todo. Los nombres. Uh, but here's, a, here's another side nugget. Uh, I don't know how to... I don't want to say side nugget. I don't know if that makes sense to your, to your parents. But uh, here's another side message. Okay, un mensaje muy rápido aquí afuera. Okay. Mira, en versículo 4. Simon the Canaanite. Simón el Cananita. Y Judas es, Escariot, es I don't know how to say that. Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. You know who else was an apostle? A Gentile. And that Gentile, and if you go and you follow all of that history of the Canaanite people... God told the people of Israel to take out who? The Canaanites out of the land. Uh, Dios, acuérdense de la Biblia que dio man, mandamiento a los judíos cuando fueron al, a la tierra de, uh, ¿cómo se dice? Uh, al, um, the promised land. I don't know how you all can say that. Dios los mandó a los judíos que sacaron los Canaanitas, acuérdense, del, 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 de esa parte de la tierra. Pero mira. Simón el Cananita está ahí y fue escogido de quién de Cristo para ser qué apóstol. So if you ask yourself today, friend, can I be used of God? Si preguntas en sí mismo, Dios, todavía me puedes usar, aunque este este tipo de gente, this people uh, were cursed, que tiene un tenían un anatema los Cananitas, todavía puede usar un pecador como yo can God still use a sinner like me yes he can si sí, puede usar un pecador como tú si usaba el cananita amen if he could use the Canaanite he can use you friend so don't give me no excuse alright now verse 5 these 12 a estos dos envió Jesús y les mandó diciendo he commanded them saying go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans enter you not no vayáis por camino de los gentiles y no entréis en ciudad de samaritanos, but si no, go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, ir antes a los ovejas perdidas de la casa de Israel. And as you go, yendo, predica, preach, saying, el reino de los cielos se ha acercado. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. So, un, un mensaje, hermano, real quick. Cuando leas aquí en Mateo, es diferente de Marcos. Los doce en este contexto fueron solamente a predicar a los judíos. They only went to go preach to the Jews. The kingdom of heaven, el reino de los cielos, eso fue el mensaje. Eso era el evangelio de los apóstoles a los perdidos de la, del pueblo de Israel. Pero en otro contexto de Marcos, vamos a mirar, y también en Lucas, los doce fueron predicando no nada más a los judíos, pero a los gentiles, el reino de Dios. So, hay que estudiar, es otro mensaje, dos diferentes reinos, dos diferentes, um, how do you say, two different um, audiences, I don't know how to say that, two different recipients, uh, dos diferentes uh, uh, grupos de personas por lo que ofrecía Cristo, una solamente para el pueblo de Israel, uno para todos. Okay, so hay que estudiar, uh, that's the balance. Vamos a Marco uh, capítulo 3. Let's go to Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3. Y vamos a versículo 13. Let's go to verse 13. The Bible says, And he goeth up into a mountain, y cuando subió al monte, llamó así a los que él quiso. He calleth unto him whom he would, and they came unto him. Y vinieron a él. And he ordained 12. Now look at that. Y ordenó a doce that they should be with him para que estuvie, estuviesen con él and that he might send them forth to preach y para enviarlos a predicar. So, otra vez, ¿qué es el mensaje? Antes de los señales, predicar. Predicar, predicar, predicar. No se olviden. Don't forget that. Porque hoy, esos hermanos que van por todo en el YouTube, ¡Ay, mira! Está creciendo el pata del hombre aquí, su, su cualquier cosa, sus oídos y su nariz, no sé qué, cualquier cosa. Nomás quieren hacer el milagro. They just want to do the miracle. No quieren predicar. They don't want to preach. ¿Qué? El evangelio. Que necesitan arrepentirse y poner fe en el Señor Jesucristo. They just want to go for the healing. Nomás quieren ir por, por el milagro. ¿Me entienden? You understand? Ok, so... Igual, le, le dio potestad, ¿verdad? Como lo leemos. Ok, otra vez, todavía. Okay. 
Ok, y este, continuando eso, ellos fueron y em, empezaron a predicar. Ok, vamos, let's keep going down here to Mark chapter number 6. Vamos a Marcos capítulo 6. <coughs> versículo 7. We're going to go to Mark uh, 6, verse number 7. And he called unto him the twelve. Y llamó a los doce. And uh, began to send them forth by two and two. Y comenzó a enviarlos de dos en dos. And gave them power over unclean spirits. Y, y les dio potestad sobre los espíritus and all that. Okay. Mira. And commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey. Y les mandó que no llevesen nada para el camino. Sino solamente bordón, ni alforja, ni pan, ni dinero en la bolsa. Uh, that they should take nothing for their journey, save a staff only, no script, no bread, no money, in their purse. But be shod with sandals and not put on two coats, sino que cal calzasen sandalias y no, visit no vistiesen dos túnicas. So as you keep going down here, they went out to preach. Fueron a, a predicar. Versículo 12. They went out saliendo, predicando, que los hombres se arrepentiensen, that they should repent. So, otra vez, antes de los maravilla, uh, maravillas, before the miracles, before the signs, be, antes de los señales, predicación, predicación, preaching, that men should repent, del hombre que debe arrepentirse y poner fe en Dios. Entonces, I just want to point it out to you, los quiero enseñar eso porque es, hoy, puedes mirar cualquier video por YouTube, nomás quieren ir y hacerlo maravillas sin predicar el evangelio, sin predicar doctrina sana, okay? So they went, and they preached, and uh, when they came back later on, they told Jesus what they did. Mira en versículo 30, the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus, entonces los apóstoles se reunieron con Jesús, y le cantaron todo lo que habían hecho, and they told them all things, both what they had done and what they had taught, lo que habían hecho y lo que habían enseñado. Entonces, the apostles, they had a direct accountability uh, to Jesus Christ while he was on earth. Tienen un, un directamente, um, a, a, gosh, I don't know how to say accountability, a Cristo uh, cuando él vino la primera vez a la tierra. Today, since we don't have an apostle, who do you have accountability over you preaching? You have your pastor. Today, how do we go out soul winning? We want to go in twos. We want to go in pairs. We want to go with our friends. We don't want to try to go by ourselves. We want to follow these good Bible examples because you don't want nothing to come out of your mouth that is not sound, and you don't want to be attacked by yourself from somebody who can't help you and somebody who can't be accountable. Por eso, cuando nos vamos a ir a ganar almas, no queremos ir solitos. Queremos ir con otro. Queremos ir en grupo para que podemos ayudarnos and we can kind of watch over all that stuff. We just kind of, we, I like that example. That's a good one to follow. Okay, so they were selected. They were chosen. Eran uh, escogidos uh, especialmente como nos enseñó Marcos y, y, este, y Mateo that they should be with him and that they should preach. Que estaban con él y lo mandó a predicar. As we come to a close, ya que uh, llegamos al último, uh, abren por favor sus Biblias a uh, Apocalipsis capítulo 2. Let's go to Revelation chapter 2. Una cosa que era muy buena para las iglesias de esos tiempos, one thing that was very good about some of these churches is that they obeyed Jesus more than today's churches, que obedecieron a Jesucristo más de las iglesias que hoy. Esta iglesia en Efesios, en Efeso, this church in Ephesus, they were more obedient to Jesus Christ than some of your churches today. Eran más obedientes al Señor Jesucristo por los doctrinas del apóstoles que, many, que, que muchos de las iglesias hoy. I'm going to show you why. So look at here, verse number one. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, Escribe el ángel de la iglesia de Efeso. These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, el que tiene las siete estrellas en su diestra, uh, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, el que anda en medio de los siete candeleros de oro, dice estas cosas. So, ¿quién está hablando? Jesus. ¿Qué está hablando? Who's talking? Jesus. I know thy works, yo conozco tus obras, and thy labor, y tu trabajo, and thy patience, y tu paciencia, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. Now ready, mira. Y que no puedes 
soportar a los malos. ¿Por qué digo yo que eran más fieles a la palabra de muchas iglesias hoy? Porque no podían soportar los malos. ¿A dónde? En la iglesia. They could not bear Christians who were being evil. They could not bear evil people. So Christian, I'm telling you, I know it's difficult to try to keep a pure church. Yo sé que es difícil mantener una iglesia puro. Pero si Cristo, if Jesus was telling his church, si dijo a la iglesia, I know what you're doing, yo sé que está haciendo, que no puedes soportar los malos, wouldn't you want Jesus to say that about your church? ¿No quieres que Cristo dice lo mismo de tu iglesia? Que no vamos a soportar a los malos, amen? We're not going to let false doctrine come in here, and we're not going to tolerate Christians that are being evil, and we're not going to uh, tolerate unbelievers that want to do evil things in the church, amen? Now, mira, look at here, verse 2. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles. Y has probado a los que se dicen ser apostoles y no lo son. Y los has hallado mentirosos and are not and has found them liars. I have a question. Tengo una pregunta. ¿A quién está hablando Cristo? Who is Jesus talking to? He is talking to the church in Ephesus. Está hablando con la iglesia en Efeso, ¿verdad? ¿A dónde dice al pastor? Where does it say the pastor? ¿A dónde dice el diácono? Where does it say the deacon? ¿A dónde dice al líder? Where does it say the leader? He is writing to the church members. Está hablando a los miembros de la iglesia. And los miembros, y los miembros, ¿qué hicieron? Probaron a los que dicen que son apóstoles. The church members were proving the visitors when they came in and said, I'm an apostle. Los miembros de la iglesia probaron a los visitantes que cuando entraron en, en, en la asamblea, soy apóstol cualquier título. O oh, sí, vamos a probarte con la doctrina que nos dio nuestros apóstoles, Juan, Pablo. ¿Por qué muchos hermanos no quieren hacer eso hoy? Why don't many Church members want to do that hoy. No, no más es mi responsabilidad, brothers. It's not just my job to, as the pastor to do it. It's your job, es tu trabajo. When you get that visitor, cuando viene ese visitante, you take the Bible, agarra la Biblia, proba. Probar a qué? Todo. Oh, hermano, como ese día, that fellow, the Russian guy, you remember that? Él quería enseñar un... Uh, un Doctrina falso, quería, he wanted to teach a false gospel. And I sat down right there, y yo senté ahí con, uh, con el esposo, y mientras la esposa con sus niñas, ay, oh, aquí, buen tiempo con los niños, pero me dijo, yo soy enseñando un, en, un evangelio falso. He told me that I was teaching a false gospel, and that I'm lying, y que soy mentiroso, y que uh, el salvación no es por gracia, por fe, that salvation is not by grace or faith. He was false, él era falso, y yo lo corregí, I corrected him, y le dije, the, the door's right there, bro, le dije, la puerta ahí está, para que enseñas tu perversión del evangelio allá afuera, pero aquí no. Christian, that's your job. Cristiano, es tu trabajo. Estudiar y probar los que dicen que soy apóstol. I'm a pastor. Yo soy pastor. Ok, ¿qué es el evangelio? Yo soy maestro. Ok, Dime, ¿qué es el evangelio? Yo voy a probar. ¿Sabes por qué? Porque Cristo le gusta eso. Jesus likes that. He likes when his people know his word. Le encanta cuando su gente conoce su palabra. Vamos, uh, antes que cerramos, let's go real quick before we close. Uh, primer Tesolenses, capítulo 5, y luego nos vamos a terminar en Efesios, capítulo 2. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5. Before we close together, church, in Ephesians chapter 2. <coughs> Bible's good? Is it, is it still good? La Biblia todavía está bueno. Okay. Todavía es miel. Is it still honey to you guys? Okay. 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 Primer Thessalonians capítulo 5, verse Thessalonians 5, versículo, uh, versículo, <laughs> versículo 21, verse 21. Prove all things. Examinando todo. Yo no sé cómo dice en otra versión en español, hermano, pero...
Proba. Probar. Todo. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Retened lo bueno. Es tu trabajo, Cristiano. That's your job, Christian. Okay, let's go to Ephesians 2. Ephesians, chapter 2. Efesio, capítulo 2. Ya casi terminamos, amen. Versículo 19, verse number 19. Nosotros no somos apostólicos. We're not apostolics. But we believe apostolic doctrine. Pero creemos en la doctrina de los apóstoles. Amen. You understand? Entienden? Mira versículo 19. Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, así que ya no sois extranjeros ni arvendizos, uh, but, sino fellow citizens with the saints, sino, ¿cómo se Considamos de los santos y de la familia de Dios, and of the household of God. So, before you got saved, antes que fue salvo, gentil, gentile, no éramos parte del pueblo de Israel. Éramos separados por la ley. En Cristo, ya somos conectados, unidos con los judíos en Cristo. Ok, en verse 20, versículo 20. And are built upon, edificados sobre el fundamento de los apóstoles y profetas. We are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Uh, siendo la principal piedra del ángulo, Jesucristo mismo. And whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, and quien todo el edificio, bien coordinado y creciendo para ser un templo santo en el Señor, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit, and quien también vosotros sois juntamente edificados para morada de Dios en el Espíritu. Otra vez, hermanos. Another thing, church, we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Somos uh, edificados sobre el fundamento de los apóstoles y profetas. I'm going to say this carefully. Voy a decir esto con cuidado. Not your pastor, no tu pastor. Not your church tradition, no tus eh, eh, traducciones de la iglesia. Apóstoles y profetas, sus doctrinas de la palabra de Dios. Porque qué va a pasar cuando el pastor empieza a enseñar algo contrario de la doctrina de los apóstoles y profetas? What's going to happen when your pastor starts teaching something contrary to the to the apostles' doctrine, the prophets? You need to correct them. Necesitas corregirlos con qué? La palabra. Or you need to leave. O necesitas ir. ¿Por qué? Because that's the foundation. Amen. Eso es el funda, eh, la fundación. Las escrituras, la Biblia. Eso es el fundación. And lastly. Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians capítulo 4, últimamente, y ya terminamos. Vámonos, muy rápido, muy rápido. ¿Qué era el propósito? I don't even know, if the, I don't even remember what, I, what that means, I forgot, but it sounds cool. What was the purpose, I think, that's what it said. Mira, Cristo, versículo 1, Él mismo dio a unos, He gave some apostles, apostles, He gave some prophets, y a unos profetas, some evangelists, a unos evangelistas, y a unos pastores, I'm sorry, and some pastors and teachers, y a unos pastores y maestros. Pastor, maestro, va junto. Necesitas, necesitas saber cómo enseñar para ser pastor. Vice versa, pastor, you need to be able to teach. You understand what we're saying here? Okay. But there's two different roles. You can be a pastor and a teacher separately. Okay, so we know that. For what? Mira, versículo 12. For the perfecting of the saints, a fin de perfeccionar a los santos, for the work of the ministry, para la obra del ministerio, for the edifying of the body of Christ, para la edificación del cuerpo de Cristo, till we all come in the unity of the faith, hasta que todos llegamos en la unidad de la fe, y del conocimiento del Hijo de Dios, and unto the knowledge of uh, the Son of God, unto a perfect man, a un varón perfecto, uh, unto the measure of the fullness of Christ, a la medida de la estatura de la plenitud de Cristo, that we henceforth, para que no, ya no seamos niños, uh, flu, how do I say that, brother? Fluquantes, so that we're no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, así, uh, llevados por, um, doquiera de todo viento de doctrina, 
by the slight of men, por extra de hombres, para que engañar emplean con astucia las artimanias del error. By the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Last point. How do you avoid being deceived? I don't know how to say it in Spanish. Maybe one of y'all can help me out. How do I avoid being deceived? Believing the apostles' doctrine, believing the New Testament prophets, trusting the word of God over my feelings, trusting the word of God over my pastor if he's not lining up, trusting my word of God over my church tradition when it doesn't line up. That's how I am going to be protected, and that's how I'm going to be, if you will, preserved from being tossed to and fro by the doctrines. Así lo terminamos, hermano, no más lo que decir que en la manera que nos protege el Señor de la doctrina, versículo 14, falso, los que van a ser uh, uh, per pervicio al, al evangelio, como dije en Galatas, es cuando yo creo en la palabra de Dios más de mis sentimientos, creo en la palabra de Dios cuando mi pastor en, está en error, creo en la palabra de Dios más de mis traducciones de mi iglesia, Así voy a estar, como se dice en español ahí, um, no como niño, que, que me van a llevar fluctua, flu, fluctuantes, llevados así. So, what do we end with? God gave you apostolic doctrine. Dios te dio doctrina apostólico. Aquí está. It's right here. Todos los, uh, los palabras de Dios aquí están. All the words of God are right here. So, if you want to continue to grow in your knowledge, si quieres continuar a crecer en tu entendimiento de la palabra, aquí está todo. It's all right here. You don't need an apostle, no necesitas apostol, profeta, prophet, to come in here para venir aquí y decirte tengo algo más que está afuera. I got something else that's outside. No, 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 no. You're going to be tossed like a child. And so, church, as we close with prayer, let's continue to guard our hearts. Let's continue to guard our church. Let's continue to take care of each other so we're not removed from Jesus with false doctrine. Okay? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you for the visitors, Lord, this afternoon. We pray for those who were unable to make it here today, God. We hope they were watching online. We just want to thank you, Lord, for giving us pure doctrine. We want to thank you, Lord, for giving us sound doctrine. And we want to thank you for giving us warning from false doctrine that you permit and that you condemn. God, would you strengthen myself, Brother Giovanni? Would you strengthen Brother Reuben to be sound men to protect our families, our wives, our members of the church from false gospels, from perverted men, from men of trouble and creeps who want to bring anything in here that will try to take any soul and draw them from you, Lord Jesus. And Lord, if any one of us is in error at any moment in our time, may we have enough humility and love for you and love for each other to correct one another in love, to call out each other in love so we could strengthen each other by the words of our apostles and prophets in our New Testament from your word, God. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us the ingredients how not to be removed from you, how not to be swayed from you, how not to backslide from you, if only we just trust this book, and if only we just believe this book to be obedient. You'll protect us. You'll keep us close to you, Lord. So, Lord, please keep every soul close to you here today. Uh, protect them from the world. Protect them from false doctrine when it tries to creep in through their YouTube or people from their family members and friends. Lord, increase faithfulness within our men of our church. Increase faithfulness within the women of our church to be soul winners and to be laborers for you, Lord. I thank you for what you're doing. We dedicate the rest of this day into your hands, Lord. Help us to get home safely. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Church, love you. God bless you. Thank you for coming today.